What's up guys, it's Oblivious Gamer here, and well, this video is just gonna be my impressions on UFO Robot Grandizer The Feast of the Wolves, a game that just came out for the PS5, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Xbox Series. My overall impressions after playing the game is the game has a lot of soul, but it's rough on the edges. What do I mean by that? Well, the game is clearly made by people who appreciate and really love Grandizer. Like, it's just clear. However, there are some technical aspects that just hold the game back. It is still a fun experience. I think if you are a fan of Grandizer, this is the best that you're gonna get. Now, UFO Robot Grandizer, The Feast of the Wolves, basically you play as the prince of the fleet planet, Duke Fleet. The game, you would start with your home planet being invaded by the Vega Empire, who apparently trick Duke and everybody on planet fleet because they thought that like there was gonna be a wedding to join both worlds, but that was just a fake and they just used the opportunity to invade the planet, which in the end causes Duke to activate Grandizer, which is the protector of the planet, However, he couldn't save his home planet and ends up fleeing. Your Highness, Grandizer cannot fall into their hands. You must survive. Use the source to take of you. Spazer go. Spazer cross. Shoot out. I didn't have a choice. If anything happened to me, who would stop them from rebuilding Grandizer? From using it to swallow up other worlds? It's too late for Fleet. But I won't let any other planet suffer the same fate. He ends up landing on planet Earth, where basically he befriends Dr. Umon, and Dr. Umon kinda adopts him, and he becomes Daisuke Umon. Or, as they call him... Then the time has come, hasn't it? I'm with you, Daisuke. Daisuke, where are you going? You know very well, father. Daisuke, if those are Vega forces up there... Yeah, it's a bit painful. From here, the game takes place two years later after the invasion of Planet Fleet and Duke reaching Earth. The game starts with Koji Kabuto, and yes, that Koji Kabuto... from Massinger because Grandizer is a sequel to Massinger. So yeah, Koji's here. Basically, the Vegans decided to invade Earth and consume its resources. Now, Duke, after what happened on his home planet, decides that he wants to be able to actually save Earth and to not end up like his home planet fleet. The game has dubs so far. They are gonna supposedly add the Japanese dub but that's gonna be later on. And well, if you play the English dub, it is dub like it's an 80s um, anime. So maybe it's a good thing. It depends on you. If you like the nostalgia, you're like, oh, wow, yeah, this feels like something that I, I used to watch in the 80s just because of the way that it's dubbed. And they really do their best to imitate what was that time. Obviously, if you're somebody that's not your kind of cup of tea, then you could always just wait for the Japanese dub. I feel it's gonna be a little bit more serious and better. Try to tune me into the frequency of the space, will you? Are you there, Rabina? Or is this another one of your miserable Vega tricks? Duke, my prince, it's really me. Please believe me. I have to speak to you. What could you possibly say that would torment me any further? Villains, you betrayed us. Soon, there'll be nothing left of my planet but crumbling ruins. How could you stand by and let this happen? Ruins? I knew nothing of this. I swear it by the stars. Duke, my own father is keeping me on board his ship against my will. You must believe me, please. This planet has afforded me two years of peace. Think of all it has left to offer. 
Let me protect it, father. Please. Fine. Go ahead. But be careful. Duke Lee! Grandizer, go! Now personally, I didn't grow up watching Grandizer in English. I mostly, when I found out Grandizer uh, was through my parents who talked about it and I watched it, but I watched the Japanese dub. So I don't have that nostalgia with the English dub as some people might have here. Overall, I think it's, the story's fine. I mean, it follows Grandizer's story, so not a lot to talk about here. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, which is probably what a lot of you guys want to see and talk about, I feel the game is fun to play. There is a lot of options on how you can engage surprisingly for Grandizer. The combat is not advanced, but it's also not basic. So you do have options and at the same time, uh, Grandizer has a skill tree. So you will be able to upgrade your abilities and also unlock new moves that you can add and use. Combat can be a bit repetitive depending on the times, but there's definitely variety, it's not something basic. Double Harkin! Dizer Punch! Double Harkin! And it feels fine. It actually feels fantastic when you're landing combos, when you're fighting, and it's enjoyable. You also don't get to pilot Grandizer, but you also get to pilot your spacer. There are going to be a lot of moments in the game where you're just going to be piloting your spacer, fighting around, and also you'll be able to pilot uh, Koji's TFO, or, so or kind of like his flying saucer. So there's also a lot of variety there when it comes to the gameplay, so you're not just piling Grandizer, but you're doing other things. At the same time, there are segments where you will actually control Daisuke, and you will just be walking around and mostly just talking with other characters. Personally, I really don't get the point of that, those segments of the game, I feel they're a lot more tedious, and also they can be a bit of a pain in the ass, because sometimes you have to talk to a specific character, and depending on where you're, like, when I was on the ranch, it was like, talk to this character, and I was like, I had to look around, and I kind of wasted some, a bit of minutes looking for that character, because you only have an icon on their head if you have to talk to them, and it's a bit hard because there's no indication of where specifically those characters are, so it's gonna be up to you to find them, though luckily the areas are not that big but it can still be a bit of an annoyance so i kind of a bit mixed the presentation as i said is fantastic there's so many moments that you just feel that you're just re-watching grandizer they really do a fantastic job with the gameplay here how it's presented how everything looks how everything feels The Royal Tower. My family might have found refuge there. No! Oh. oh no, not this time. Double Harkin. Now, here's where I was saying that the roughness comes. There's a lot of stuttering. He 
don't get your frame rate stability like it drops a lot there's pop-ins that pop-ins are gonna be happening constantly there's also weird moments where like grandizer can get stuck or because like the terrain is not a flat surface there's like mountains there's valleys and sometimes you can go on top of stuff and that can cause some issues so that's definitely a thing to consider it's a bit of a pain in the ass the game clearly is being held back by you know the budget that it had um i, I do feel some of the stuff here can definitely be ironed out with patches and i'm hopeful that the team is able to do that to have a better product in the long run because i think this is fantastic and it's not an expensive game it's 39.99 i mean a lot of games now are no longer 60 they're going by 70. this is not a bad price for what the game is and what you get out of here the areas of of exploration are not that big but it's a bit open so you have like sec open segments that you're able to explore there's gonna be stuff for you to collect resources that you will have to gather obviously to upgrade grandizer and get new skills or become stronger and you are able to go to your previous areas also so there's kind of like a bit of going back and forth and if you have that completionist mentality you can definitely like finish other missions and like try to clear all the areas completely so i think this is a fun game honestly i was more worried that it was gonna be a hot mess but it's actually pretty solid for the price the company that has made the game which is Enro, it's not like they're a big company or they have developed massive games so i i think they did a fantastic job here in the end of the day do i recommend this game i think it's a must buy if you are a grandizer fan or if you want to experience that mecha game and get that bit of nostalgia from the 90s and 80s mecha which it's not bad it's they really replicate well music, action, sequences. However, if you're somebody who's just like, I like mecha, you know, you just want to play something mecha. I mean, if you have 40 bucks and it's not going to hurt, I definitely think it's, you could definitely get it. If not, I would say you could wait a bit until the game is patched a bit more or there's a sale. So that is my opinion. I like the game i'm gonna keep playing it i'm having a fantastic time with that however like i said there's some rough patches that needs to get fixed but yeah that's just my impressions on ufo robot grandizer the feast of the wolves as always though it's not just about me what are your thoughts guys this has been oblivious gamer and i hope you'll have a wonderful day or night wherever you are